Have you ever heard of the most haunted house in England? Welcome to the story of Borley Rectory. This is not just any tale, it's a chilling narrative of a once grand house, steeped in mystery and legend. The story begins in 1862 in the tranquil village of Borley, Essex, where the imposing Gothic-style rectory was constructed. It was intended to be the peaceful residence of the rector of the parish of Borley, Reverend Henry Dawson Ellis Bull, and his family. But peace, as they soon discovered, would prove elusive. The rectory was far from ordinary. It was a dwelling of secrets, of whispers in the wind, of echoes in its ancient halls. Within a year of its construction, the first signs of the supernatural emerged. In the hush of the night, the sound of unexplained footsteps would reverberate through the house, chilling the hearts of the Bull family. This was only the beginning of the rectory's eerie tale. By the dawn of the 20th century, the Bull family reported an encounter with a spectral figure believed to be a nun. This eerie sighting set the stage for a series of escalating paranormal events. By the time Reverend Henry Bull passed away in 1892, the house had already etched its name in the annals of the supernatural, its reputation as a site of inexplicable phenomena firmly established. The mantle then passed to his son, Reverend Henry Foister Bull, who took over the parish and, unknowingly, the emotional legacy of the rectory's hauntings. The house continued to be a hotbed of paranormal occurrences, its spectral secrets whispered in hushed tones across the village. When Reverend Harry Bull died in 1927, the rectory stood empty, its spectral secrets locked within its walls, waiting for the next chapter in its haunting journey. But as we know, the paranormal refuses to be silenced. As the echoes of unexplained footsteps faded, the emotional saga of Borley Rectory had just begun. By 1900, the walls of Borley Rectory had already heard whispers of the paranormal. It was in this year that the Bull family, the rectory's original inhabitants, experienced an encounter that would forever etch itself into the annals of supernatural history. They reported seeing the apparition of a nun, a spectral figure that seemed to glide through the halls of their home. This eerie encounter marked the beginning of an escalating series of paranormal events that would come to define the rectory's ghostly reputation. The apparition of the nun was not a solitary event. Over time, the Bull family reported more sightings, each more chilling than the last. The phantom nun was joined by other specters, each with their own haunting tales to tell. The family lived in the shadow of these apparitions, their lives intertwined with the spectral figures that seemed to inhabit their home. The Reverend Henry Bull, the patriarch of the family, bore witness to these mysterious occurrences until his death in 1892. The rectory, with its dark secrets, was then passed on to his son, Harry Foister Bull. Harry, like his father, found himself at the mercy of the eerie phenomena that seemed to pervade the house. The legacy of the rectory's hauntings, a chilling inheritance, was now his to bear. Harry continued to live in the rectory, a silent spectator to the supernatural. The house, it seemed, had a life of its own. Its walls echoed with unexplained sounds, its rooms filled with an eerie energy. It was as if the house itself was a portal to another realm, a realm of spirits and specters. Yet amidst the fear and unease there was a sense of fascination. The rectory and its haunting charm had become a beacon for those curious about the paranormal. The tales of the Bull family's encounters with the spectral nun and other apparitions drew the attention of paranormal enthusiasts far and wide. When Harry Bull took his final breath in 1927, a house shrouded in spectral secrets stood vacant. The halls of Borley Rectory once filled with life, now echoed with the whispers of the past, awaiting the next chapter in its ghostly saga. The arrival of Reverend Guy Eric Smith and his wife marked a significant turning point in the emotional narrative of the rectory. The Smiths took up residence in the vacant Borley Rectory, unaware that they were stepping into a house with a reputation for unexplained phenomena. Barely had they settled in, when the rectory began to reveal its spectral secrets. Imagine the surprise, the unease, the sheer disbelief as servant bells, disconnected for years, started ringing of their own accord. Phantom lights began to flicker in windows of rooms that were vacant, casting eerie illuminations in the dead of night. And the footsteps. Those mysterious, untraceable footsteps, echoing through the hollow chambers of the house. But the rectory had more in store. Mrs. Smith reported a chilling encounter with an apparition, a spectral horse-drawn carriage, visible only in the darkness of the night, silently gliding across the grounds of the rectory. The emotional distress was palpable, 
The fear was real. Desperate for answers, the Smiths reached out to the Daily Mirror, hoping to shed light on the inexplicable occurrences plaguing their home. The story caught the attention of one man who would become an integral part of the Borley Rectory narrative, paranormal researcher Harry Price. In 1929, Price made his first visit to Borley Rectory. He was met with an onslaught of supernatural phenomena, from objects seemingly thrown by invisible hands to mysterious spirit messages. Yet, his involvement would later be scrutinized, with skeptics suggesting that Price, a skilled illusionist, may have fabricated some of the incidents. The Smiths' tenure at Borley Rectory was brief. By the end of 1929, they bid farewell to the haunting abode. But as they drove away, they left behind more than just an empty house. They left a legacy of spectral encounters and mysterious happenings that would continue to intrigue paranormal enthusiasts for years to come. As the Smiths left Borley in 1929, they left behind more than just an empty house. In 1930, the Reverend Lionel Algernon Foister moved into Borley Rectory, unknowingly stepping into a world of spectral secrets. Lionel, a cousin of the Bulls, his wife Marianne and their adopted daughter Adelaide, were the new residents of the infamous house, a place already steeped in tales of the paranormal. It wasn't long before the rectory's eerie reputation lived up to its name. The Foister family found themselves caught in a vortex of poltergeist activity. From the incessant bell ringing to the shattering of windows, the house seemed to be alive with an unseen force. Wall writings appeared mysteriously, adding a new layer of intrigue to the haunting. These cryptic messages, often addressed to Marianne, begged for light and mass prayers. But the chilling climax was the repeated attacks on young Adelaide by an invisible entity. Their peaceful home had turned into a theater of the bazaar. But the house's paranormal activity was not the only thing brewing within its walls. Marianne Foister, the woman at the center of these events, held secrets of her own. As the supernatural occurrences intensified, so did the whispers of Marianne's extramarital affairs. In a shocking twist, she later admitted to using the ghostly explanations as a cover for her illicit liaisons. The rectory was not just a house of ghosts, but a house of secrets. As the years rolled on, the emotional toll of living in such a place began to show. Marianne's health started to deteriorate, a decline that many attributed to the relentless supernatural disturbances. In 1935, five years after they had moved in, the Foister family took the difficult decision to leave the rectory. Their departure marked the end of an era, a period that had seen the paranormal activity at Borley Rectory reach its peak. With the departure of the Foister family, Borley Rectory stood silent, its spectral secrets echoing through the empty halls. In May 1937, Harry Price returned to Borley Rectory, reigniting the house's supernatural activity. With a fresh lease agreement in hand, Price was back, this time with a group of eager, official observers by his side. His aim? to delve deeper into the spectral secrets of the rectory, to unravel its mysteries and expose the truth. Price's investigation was intense. He meticulously documented every incident, every whisper of the inexplicable. The house, it seemed, was keen to perform for its new audience. Objects moved of their own accord, eerie noises filled the silence, and strange messages appeared on walls. But it was a seance conducted by a medium, Helen Glanville, that truly set the stage for a dramatic revelation. Glanville claimed to have made contact with two spirits during the seance. One was a young nun who revealed herself as Marie Lair. She shared a tragic tale, professing to have been murdered on the grounds of the rectory centuries ago. The other spirit was that of Sunex Amouris, who predicted a fiery end for Borley Rectory. However, controversy soon clouded over Price's findings. Accusations arose, suggesting that Price may have manipulated some of the events to fit his narrative. Critics argued that Price, a skilled conjurer, could have easily created illusions of the paranormal. This cast a shadow of doubt over his investigation, and whispers of deceit and manipulation began to taint the tale of Borley Rectory. Then, in 1939, came the prophecy's fulfillment. Borley Rectory was ravaged by a fire, leaving it in ruins. The cause was mundane, a faulty oil lamp. Yet it was eerily in line with the prediction made during Glanville's seance, the rectory was finally demolished in 1944, putting an end to its haunting presence. Yet despite its physical absence, the spectral legacy of Borley Rectory lived on. The tales, the legends, the mysteries, they all continued to resonate, echoing through the corridors of time. As the final chapter of Borley Rectory closed, 
its legacy as the most haunted house in England would continue to captivate the imagination. We hope you've enjoyed this spectral journey through the haunting narrative of Borley Rectory. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Borley Rectory, with its chilling tales and mysteries, has certainly left an indelible mark on the annals of supernatural history. But what do you think? Is there truth to the haunting of Borley Rectory, or are the tales mere illusions woven by the imaginative? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to leave your comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and wish to delve deeper into the fascinating, sometimes eerie world of history and mystery, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us continue our quest to unearth and share these captivating stories. And remember, the past may be gone but it never truly leaves. It lingers, whispers, and sometimes it haunts. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your spirit for discovery alive.